Hey, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Angela. I'm a full-time voiceover artist and audiobook narrator, and my channel is dedicated to those of you that are just getting started out in this wonderful world of voiceover. And through my channel, I share with you some techniques that I use every day in my own voiceover business, and I answer your questions. So today, what we're going to talk about is something that I've been talking about doing for a long, long time, and that is that I had just purchased and I say just, but the Lewitt 440 Pure. I bought it about a month ago, maybe more than a month ago. And I've been talking about doing a comparison with this new mic, the Lewitt 440, against my Sennheiser 416. So in this video, I'm going to go through and compare the two microphones if you're considering getting one or the other then maybe this will help you determine which one you should go with. So that's what we're going to do today. So let's get started. Okay, so again, today we're going to go through a comparison between a Sennheiser MKH 416 shotgun mic versus the new Lewitt my new Lewitt, <laughs> 440, LCT 440 Pure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, of course, take this microphone out of the box and hook it up. And then I'm going to do a little bit of reading for you and then splice them in. So it's the Sennheiser and then the Lewitt, Sennheiser, then the Lewitt, me narrating a few different types of things. So you can hear the differences and nuances. And then I'm also going to record what I'm reading, narrating, on my Adobe Audition DAW so I can see any kind of noise, the frequencies, what they look like visually in a waveform as well. So let's get started first with the Sennheiser MKH 416 shotgun mic. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the same section, the preface of The Picture of Dorian Gray and then record both so you can see what it looks like in the waveform on Adobe Audition. So let's get started. The preface. The artist is the creator of beautiful things. To reveal art and conceal the artist is art's aim. The critic is he who can translate into another manner or a new material his impression of beautiful things. The highest as the lowest form of criticism is a mode of autobiography. The Preface The artist is the creator of beautiful things. To reveal art and conceal the artist is art's aim. The critic is he who can translate into another manner or a new material his impression of beautiful things. The highest as the lowest form of criticism is a mode of autobiography. Those who find ugly meanings in beautiful things are corrupt without being charming. This is a fault. Those who find beautiful meanings and a beautiful thing are the cultivated. For these, there is hope. They are the elect to whom beautiful things mean only beauty. Those who find ugly meanings in beautiful things are corrupt without being charming. This is a fault. Those who find beautiful meanings in beautiful things are the cultivated. For these, there is hope. They are the elect to whom beautiful things mean only beauty. From the point of view of form, the type of all the arts is the art of the musician. From the point of view of feeling, the actor's craft is the type. All art is at once surface and symbol. Those who go beneath the surface do so at their peril. Those who read the symbol do so at their peril. From the point of view of form, the types of all the arts is the art of the musician. From the point of view of feeling, the actor's craft is the type. All art is at once surface and symbol. Those who go beneath the surface do so at their peril. Those who read the symbol do so at their peril. It is the spectator, and not life, that art really mirrors. Diversity of opinion about a work of art shows that the work is new, complex, and vital. When critics disagree, the artist is in accord with himself. 
We can forgive a man for making a useful thing as long as he does not admire it. The only excuse for making a useless thing is that one admires it intensely. All art is quite useless. Oscar Wilde Okay, I'm going to keep using... Actually, I'm just going to make this bigger. I'm going to close this and make this bigger. All right, so let's take a look at the two different waveforms. Okay, I'm going to keep using the Lewitt for now. So if we go back to the Sennheiser, I can already see a difference. I didn't change any of my settings. All of my inputs, my uh, interface, my DBX, which is just, I only use the DBX 286 for just the slight noise gate. So nothing has been changed other than the microphone in my, as far as my settings go for my DAW and everything else. Every All my hardware is the same. So just looking at these two, the Sennheiser is already... It looks like it's a little bit quieter. So looking at my peaks here, and again, this is unprocessed, right? So with the Lewitt, it looks like they're peaking just above 18, negative 18. And the Sennheiser is much lower. They're peaking. I mean, the big, you know, I, I am peaking over 18, but for the most part, they're closer to negative 22. Here, let's make this a little bit bigger here. Yeah, they're just eclipsing negative 21, negative 22-ish. Let's go back to the Lewitt. Let's make this a little bit, whoops, broader so we can see. Yeah, it looks like the Lewitt is picking up a lot more. Now let's look at the noise. So the Sennheiser, let's look at the noise here. So if we, my room tone, we're peaking at about negative 67, let's just say. Maybe not even negative 67. Let's take a look at the Lewitt. So it looks like it's picking up a little bit more noise. But I think that's just because the Lewitt is a little bit more sensitive than the Sennheiser. But let's take a listen back, shall we? The preface. The artist is the creator of beautiful things. To reveal art and conceal the artist is art's aim. The critic is he who can translate into another manner or a new material his impression of beautiful things. The Preface The artist is the creator of beautiful things. To reveal art and conceal the artist is art's aim. Wow, just by listening back to those two different recordings of the same copy, the Sennheiser sounds a little bit muted, like it sounds rich, but the Lewitt seems like it picks up, it's a little bit crisper and cleaner sounding to me. I mean, it's a little bit more sensitive. I didn't hear a ton more room noise. I didn't hear a ton more mouth noise or anything like that, although I'm sure it will since it's a sensitive mic. But I think to me, it sounded a little bit brighter cleaner, crisper. And don't get me wrong, I love I love my Sennheiser and I've used it for years, but it sounds a little bit less rich than the Sennheiser, but I think with a little bit of tweaking in the EQ maybe and then maybe a little bit of tweaking with noise removal if I needed to get it down below negative 60 for an audiobook for the Lewitt, I think that could be achieved fairly easily. But let's take a look at the specs of the two microphones. Okay, so now we have the Lewitt 440 Pure, or Lewitt Pure 440. And the microphone comes with this shock mount, this nifty little filter, that like pop filter that sits right in front of it, and then also a little fuzzy uh, filter as well. So you could really choose which one you want to go with, both or one or the other. I haven't tried this one, but it doesn't look like this one will fit with the filter that comes uh, on the front of it. And I was trying to find a good picture of it. And well, there sort of is on the side of the box here, but there, yeah, that doesn't really help. But the microphone for, what did I pay for this microphone? Under $300. I don't remember the exact amount, but you can find it on Amazon for under $300. For under $300, you get this microphone 
the filter, the shock mount, and then the fuzzy little pop filter as well. So you can choose one or the other. And it's pretty much plug and play. I unplugged the Sennheiser and plugged this right in. So it's, I know it's a larger diaphragm, so it should sound a little bit crisper, cleaner. It's also um, doesn't really get in the way. You know, that's why one of the reasons why I chose the Sennheiser to do videos with because it doesn't get in the way of the of the of the video, right? This one doesn't either. Well, I'm sort of off, off axis anyway, but okay. So just looking at a Google comparison quickly, just to give you an idea. Here's the two microphones: the Sennheiser MKH416 and the Lewitt LCT440 Pure Large Diaphragm Condenser Mic. So right away, the biggest difference between these two microphones, and they sound very similar, just apart from just slight nuances. The Sennheiser, as you know, is a very expensive microphone. And again, I love my Sennheiser. I've used it for years on 100 plus audiobooks now. But it's $1,000. It's a very high priced mic. The Lewitt is 270 plus. And again, I paid under $300 for it. I think I want to say it was about 270, 280 maybe after tax. But with that came the shock mount and the two pop filters. The Sennheiser only came with the Sennheiser and the little fuzzy pop filter that comes with it in a nice case. The shock mount I had to buy separately. And the pop filter that I use on it, the mesh pop filter was separate. So, also, the Sennheiser is a small diaphragm shotgun mic. The Lewitt is a large diaphragm condenser mic. The Sennheiser is unidirectional, meaning it picks up directly what's in front of it, right? The Lewitt is omnidirectional and unidirectional. I'm using it off-axis just exactly like the Sennheiser. However, if I got right in front of it and I played with the mic placement a little bit with this microphone, it might even sound a little bit. I might even pick up some more of the richness, the deep tones of my voice. I was just trying to keep this same, same for this video. Sennheiser, same place. Lewitt, same place. Um, they're both used for studio. They're both wired. They're both XLR mics. They're both analog and condenser mics. So really the biggest price or biggest difference here between the two is the price. So I'm very, very impressed with this Lewitt. I think, I think I'm going to keep it here and I'm going to play with placement, mic placement a little bit, and maybe some of the settings in my, in my DAW to see if I can get a little bit more richness out of it and maybe control the noise a little bit. Not that the mic makes more noise. I want to make that clear because I don't, I don't think that, I think it actually has lower self noise than the Sennheiser, but I think it's a little bit, it picks up a little bit more. Similar to like a Neumann 10, TLM 103, that it's a lot more sensitive than the Sennheiser. The Sennheiser is meant to be like a, it's like a, a boom. When you're watching old TV shows, that's the mic that they're hanging over the actors so they can get, pick up their sound. And that's also the mic that they use outdoors to pick up sounds. This mic here, I think, is really great for a voiceover studio because it is, it picked up my voice very, very well. I don't know if you heard the difference in the video while I was recording it. I'm going to put this all together later and really hear the difference between the two, and I hope you could hear the difference. But all in all, I think, so far, the Lewitt is a great choice for voiceover, especially with its price point being under $300. I think that's a game changer. So as of right now, I say I recommend it. I recommend it. I'm going to add this microphone to my list of recommended VO gear on my website at voiceoverangela.com. And I'm just kind of blown away. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions for me or any recommendations maybe of, um, you know, comparisons in the future, I would appreciate some comments down below. But I thank you for your time, and please like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. That tells YouTube that you enjoy my content, and hopefully it'll help more people to find it. So again, thank you for your time, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.